Hello everyone, today we're going to look at intro to functions and lines. We're going to start with function notation. y equals f of x means that y is a function of x. If we just remember mathematical to English, equals means is, the letter f in this case stands for function, and then the parentheses x means of x. So remember, it's not multiplication, it's not f times x, it's a function of x. x is the independent variable, and y is the dependent variable. y depends on x. So for example, let f of x equal 2x squared minus x. And we're going to find the following. a, f of 3. Everywhere I see an x, I'm going to plug in... 3. I have two x's, so it's going to be 2 times 3 squared minus 3. Remember order of operations, we do exponents first. There's nothing in parentheses we can simplify, so 3 squared is 9. 2 times 9 minus 3 gives us 15. The next one is f of negative 1. 2 times negative 1 squared minus negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. The double negative becomes a positive, And we get 3. C, f of 3y. 2 times 3y squared minus 3y. 3y squared is 9y squared. Remember to square the 3, square the y. Then we get 18y squared minus 3. That's the best we can do. If we wanted, we could factor it. We could have 3y times 6y minus 1, but that's really all we could do. We can't combine them. They're not like terms. And the last one is f of x plus h. We're going to see this come up a lot, x plus h or a number plus h. So um, you want to get used to this because you're going to see it fairly often. So again, every x becomes x plus h. So 2 times x plus h squared minus, in parentheses, x plus h. Remember, you're squaring a binomial. So this is FOIL. And we have 2 times x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. So don't forget the o and the i from FOIL. You cannot just distribute the squared and say it's x squared plus h squared. So you need to remember the middle terms. I'm going to distribute the 2 and distribute the negative. So I have 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared minus x minus h. None of those terms are like terms, so I can't do anything to it. This is the best I can do. So let's try another one. g of t equals 4 minus t squared. Let's find g of negative 2. 4 minus negative 2 squared is 4 minus 4 which is 0. Next we have g of t squared. 4 minus t squared squared becomes 4 minus t to the fourth. Remember, if I have something to a power and then I raise it to another power, I simplify it by multiplying. So it's t to the fourth because 2 times 2 is 4. Not because 2 plus 2 is 4, not because 2 squared is 4, but 2 times 2 is 4. We multiply them together. So let's try g of x plus h. Again, that's 4 minus x plus h squared. So 4 minus x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Again, like I said before, you're going to see this come up a lot. And then I'll distribute the negative. None of my terms are like terms, so again, this is the best I can do. And then lastly, g of negative 1 plus h. So instead of x plus h, I have a number plus h. So 4 minus negative 1 plus h squared. 4 minus 1 minus 2h plus h squared when I FOIL it out. 4 minus 1 is 3. And then I distribute the negative towards the rest of it. So I have 3 plus 2h minus h squared. Now we'll look at the line part of this. Recall that the slope of a line is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The difference in y's divided by the differences in x's. 
This is sometimes written as delta Y over delta X. Remember, this is the Greek letter capital delta, and it means small change in. So we see that come up. We're going to see something similar to it come up later when we talk about derivatives. And it's also sometimes noted as rise over run. So we'll do a couple examples of finding the slope between pairs of points. The first one, between 1, 0 and 2, negative 1. So if I plug in my this point as uh, x2, y2, this point as x1, y1, I get negative 1 minus 0 over 2 minus 1 which simplifies down to negative 1. 3 comma 5 and negative 2 comma 5. 5 minus 5 over negative 2 minus 3. That's 0 over negative 5, which is 0. Right? 0 divided by anything that's not 0 is 0. 12, negative 3 and negative 2, 8. I get 8 minus negative 3 over negative 2 minus 12, and that becomes negative 11 over 14. Remember, the negative sign we generally put on top. So doing out the math, I get 11 over negative 14, but again, that negative I can put anywhere, and we tend to put it on the top. And then negative 2, negative 1, and negative 2, 3. M is 3 minus negative 1 over negative 2 minus negative 2. That's 4 over 0, which is undefined. Remember, you cannot divide by 0. 0 can be on the top. It cannot be on the bottom. And now we're going to look a little bit at formulas for lines. You've seen before in things like Tech 1 or Tech 2 or anything of the equivalent, slope-intercept form of a line is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope, b is the y value of the y-intercept. We also have point-slope form, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we're going to use these two formulas to create equations of lines. So for the first one, we want the equation of the line that has intercepts 0, 3, and negative 6, 0. For both of these forms, we need the slope, so we're going to find the slope first. And if we do that, we should get 1 half. Since I have the y-intercept, I'm going to use it and use the slope-intercept form. b is 3, so I get y equals 1 half x plus 3. As another one, we have a line that has a slope of 4 and passes through to negative 1. So we already have the slope. We also have a point, so we're just going to put it into point-slope form. y minus negative 1 becomes y plus 1. It equals 4 times x minus 2. I can leave it just like this. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to simplify it. I don't have to move things over. This is a perfectly fine example of an equation of a line. Another one, a line that passes through 2, 1, and negative 3, 2. So again, just like with A, I have to find the slope first. And if I do that, I should be getting negative one-fifth. And then I'm going to put it into slope, uh, point-slope form. Using this point, I get the following line. Or I could use the other point, and I would get this line. So either y minus 1 equals negative one-fifth times x minus 2, or y minus 2 equals negative 1 fifth x plus 3. Either one is perfectly fine. And as my last one, we have a line that passes through 4, 4 and negative 3, 0. So again, I need to find the slope. And if you use the slope formula, you should be getting 4 sevenths. And then using my first point, in point slope form, I get y minus 4 equals 4 sevenths x minus 4. Or, using my other line, my other point, I have y minus 0, which is just y. So y equals 4 sevenths times x plus 3. So again, if you have two points, it doesn't matter which point you use. Um, you're going to get the same answer either way if you do simplify it. So read through the sections, try out the homework, and let me know if you have any questions. Good luck.